Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons or advancements. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me tonight, we have Amy. Hello. We have Scarecrow. Good evening. And we have EJ, back from Nobility and WonderCon and stuff. <laughs> hey, dude, like, what's up, guys? <laughs> so... On tonight's show, we are talking Nobility at WonderCon, where we would take Star Trek if we could get our hands on the helm, and Stuart has got a special segment for the new Arrow and Flash spin-off series that they're planning and they've been announcing all sorts of stuff for, so we look forward to getting to that one eventually. Hey, Stuart. Excellent. <laughs> I thought he went out the airlock again. Nah, I just didn't. Int- I just didn't do an intro for him. I just because he's no. I was just like, I'm just gonna wait, and eventually I'm gonna chime in somewhere. Well, you being noisy. Mm. Yeah. Um. So, well, so probably Stuart's hot little name tag was hiding behind the chat window, so I couldn't see him. That's my excuse for <laughs> sticking with it. Um. He is very forgettable. <laughs> so. No, what are we talking about again? <laughs> Shush. Uh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> Star Trek. Recently, there's been a lot of speculation that Star Trek's going to be returning to TV. Mind you, that did that speculation did begin about the same time that Enterprise finished, so I, maybe recently wasn't the best choice of words. Um, so I got the guys to sit down and sort of plan out if they were going to helm a Star Trek series, what sort of direction they would take it. And the plan is they get to pitch their idea to Amy who, being a non-Star Trek person, will represent CBS, because CBS hates Star Trek TV shows. (laughs) CBS cares. So so I figured figured that would be be fair. I thought Fox would be better. (laughs) Whichever. So so she gets to choose which one of our ideas she's going to green light and turn into a series that she can cancel after two seasons. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Wow. Jeez, it even gets more seasons than Firefly. <laughs> I, I just have to say, um, we had people, uh, uh, we were at WonderCon today, and we literally had people coming up to us begging us not to get distributed by Fox. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I am not kidding you. Because of what happened Nobody likes, Fo- Nobody likes Fox. Yeah. Nobody likes Fox. Yeah. <laughs> they Kids screwed over around. Firefly, and they screwed over Fantastic Four. Yeah, that's putting it lightly. Okay, anyway, I'm going to let Scarecrow start. Oh, joy. What would your pitch be for a new Star Trek series? If you could be the one that's helming it, when's it set, who's it follow, what's the basic concept? Hey, guys, okay. I'm just sitting out for a quick second. Okay, yeah, okay. Back. Catch if you when you get back. If I were to do this, it would be set post about 50... 50- 20 to 50 years post-Voyager return. Yep. I'm thinking a whole new generation. So completely off the wall. Maybe a little bit of a tie back to the older series with some of the... Characters reoccurring uh, and stuff. Junior officers. So like uh, Harry Kim or Tom Paris having admiral ranks or high positions by that point. Because they've still been in Starfleet for a while. Or, or at the very least, captains. Yeah. yeah. Or having had a time to mature, grow into their positions sort of thing. But set in the future with properly integrated technology that Voyager brought back. That'd be cool. Because end of Voyager, she brings back all this great technology. A couple of years later, we see the Enterprise-E going into battle against the, the Nemesis or whatever it was. Yeah, without any of it. <laughs> With no upgrades. I'm like, no transphasic torpedoes, no ablative armor. 
all that sort of stuff built into the next generation. Make it an enterprise if you have to. Yeah. Well, a new generation enterprise, not the E or, or the D or anything else like that. Give it another... Yeah. If it's 20, 50 years, it gives them plenty of time to design a new class of ship. Yeah. And integrate all this stuff in for the flagship and improve upon it. It was... Yeah. Hey, it's... They got a bit of a kickstart there again. Other than that, uh, keep it closer to the original so, series or even Next Generation because it had a bit of everything. So, Explorer sort of poking around. Explorer poking around with a bit of Diplomat on the side and science. Yeah. Exploration. And sciencey stuff. No being grab locked in, in the one position with a space station. Maybe not quite as far as having to spend 75 years trying to get home like Voyager and cheating along the way. Yeah. But maybe getting stuck uh, through science experiments on the engines or something like that uh, a couple of months out yeah. and having to make their way back from that. But no really long voyages, but some. you can almost make a season out of the, yeah. out of being stuck a bit, far, a bit too far out, but not all the way out. Yeah. You don't want to go too voyagery. Yeah, but just integrate it all and make it more streamlined and what we know Trek to be that works. Yeah. Now, the the way I would do it is um, I would set it maybe 50, 100 years. So, so almost a next, another next-gen time skip level forward. And I would have it sort of extrapolate out on the Star Trek Online storyline and sort of go beyond that. Um, where almost everything has been absorbed into the Federation. So the Federation is almost a chunk of the Alpha Quadrant, if you know what I mean. So almost everything in the Alpha Quadrant is now part of the Federation, but the problem is it's so big, so bureaucratically weighed down that it's like the Roman Empire at the height of its power. It's starting to come apart at the seams. And the Enterprise's job would be able to be, the, obviously, the next... Enterprise, like J, H, K, whatever. Um, and, sorry, two seconds. Uh, yeah. EJ says the, the art, one of the, one of the guys who, um, an art director who, Worked on Voyager and Deep Space Nine refers to Voyager as Snor Snorager. Yeah. Voyager is pretty Our bad. art director. The, 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 not, yeah. not one of it the does art directors. Oh, your art director. Yeah, your art director. Yeah, yeah. ability. Yeah. Sorry. Read, I read that it wrong. It does <laughs> take... Voyager does oh, take good. a bit too long to get anywhere, but... Yeah. But yeah, um, but anyway, so this, this... There's coffee in that there, Nebula. Kill it with fire. I agree completely on, with you on that, but there were aspects later in Voyager that would work really well in a newer series. Yeah. And anyway, so the, the, the way I would have it is sort of big bloated federation. It's starting to come apart. There's too many different political directions all clawing for power. And the first, say, two seasons is Enterprise running around trying to haphazardly stitch this thing back together. And then, say, end of season two, start of season three, there'd be a ma it'd be the outbreak of this massive civil war, almost like in Babylon Five, where they had the the human civil war, uh, but for the whole Federation, and the Federation sort of fractures um, into say three or four factions. The whole thing goes to one massive civil war, um, and just as this civil war is reaching sort of the the climax, this other force from Almost not, I wouldn't say Borg like, but that sort of power gap from outside of the galaxy approaches and attacks and hits the, the Federation at its softest spot and just tears its way into um, the Feder Federation territory. And all these different factions have to try and put all their differences aside and reform into one unified fighting force to take back. Um. What? Yeah, they should should have take back the main core of their universe. That would be sort of where I'd go with it. What about you, Stuart? Where would you throw Star Trek? 
Star Trek. <laughs> What's Star Trek? Star Trek. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go a little. Really uh, dip I'm gonna go a little different with this. Uh, because I'm not too big of a Trek person. Forgive me. Because I grew up on the other side mm. of the fence. Never. But um, what I would like to do yeah. is ha um, ha I have uh, I don't know how this would work, but what I would love to do is have it, have it involve next gen and the Voyager crew. And what sort of what the the basis of it is is um, Voyager um hits a wormhole, goes through it. Uh, half the crew's wiped out, and they end up in Next Gen's timeline. So they go backwards in time. Yeah. Yeah. And then they've got, to, and then, and then they find um uh, the Enterprise has has been crippled by the Borg. So and then the, and there's only half the crew of the Enterprise left. So so they've got to mingle the crews together to survive. Basically, sort of a survival type show. Yeah, I knew. It's horrible, yeah. I know. Well, you know, this almost sounds like a certain movie. Wasn't it First Contact? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. We do not talk about First Contact. <laughs> that the was light. a great movie, why not? <laughs> I just like there how There was they... no light sticks being waved around for him to... Yeah. Hey, hey, over. hey, hey, hey. Oh, right, oh. he's a war tard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, what I said, other side of the fence. See, we've got a really good balance here. I like Stargate. I don't necessarily like Star Wars. I don't necessarily like Star Trek. But I don't hate either of them either. I'll watch them. Stuart is a Star Wars I'm, I'm, guy. I'm but, the Jedi. Yeah, he likes Star Wars. And not necessarily Stargate or Star Trek. And, I will watch them. But he'll watch them. And you've got Scarecrow. He's just Scarecrow. We, we just ignore him and... Yeah. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> no, the way I would have the the way, <laughs> the way I have the crew is um sort of I would like Riker to lead the ship. Yeah, I know Riker gets a lot of lag, but I actually like him. Right, all I'm gonna say, oh, as long I, as he I, sits I, down I, properly, it doesn't matter. Can I put a, <laughs> oh, yes, you're can the I right give you an idea? Can I throw it. something at you, Stuart? Sure. Uh, read this one and I think it actually works. Riker's first officer, Tom Paris. Yeah, no, that's Ooh. where I was going. That's where I was going with that. Paris is, Paris is first officer, yeah. That'd that's be where interesting. I was leading towards that. Yeah. On the, on the... And then have, um... And Worf is still security officer and stuff, so... Yeah. Because you, you can't replace Worf. <laughs> uh, Watch us. <laughs> <laughs> one, of the, one of the series that I saw spinning around online, um, Star Trek Renegade seems like would be a pretty cool idea. Um, I'm not exactly sure what their plan is. I know a little bit, so I'm probably going to get this catastrophically wrong. So, probably. But, um, it's along the lines of they're a starship crew, but they're sort of almost like bandits. And they run around the background of the Federation and sort of try and avoid Starfleet. And so instead of focusing... What? I know a little more. You know a little more? I know a little more. <sighs> Podcast, like Dad. Well, that's that's Sorry. mildly that's mildly awkward. <laughs> I, I tell my dad every there's... week. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, so, Dad. <laughs> so, um, actually, just a random question, just because we're in Australia and we don't get to, we don't know what you guys do in the states. Over Easter, do you guys have any public holidays? Well, I mean, most folks do get Easter off of work, but uh, I'm not sure if it's a... Uh, actually, I'm pretty sure it's not a federal holiday. It's more of just a tradition. Oh, okay. It's just, we, we get the Friday off, the Saturday off, and the Monday off guaranteed every Easter. Yeah. Uh, schools normally go on spring break around that time. Yeah. Uh, so that way, you know, people can go home to their families or, you know go to Mexico and party it up in TJ. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Tijuana. Mm. Woo! Yay, Tijuana. Because <laughs> mm. I've never a, been, I, even though I'm from Mexico. Uh, although I'd still rather go to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. 
You know, it's funny. I've been to China. I've been to Australia. Um, I've been to Italy, but I've never been to Canada, Mexico, or Puerto Rico. <laughs> so what you're saying is you've flown around the world and avoided your closest neighbors. Yeah. Wh- wh- which is really funny considering I'm half Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now the question uh, remains. Really, how, the question remains. <laughs> <laughs> or don't, and we'll have some fun. I was. I was just about to say. How did you get across the border? Was it through those secret <laughs> tunnels from Fast and the Furious? Because if it was, that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you just dug on the. You just dug says, the fence. <laughs> <laughs> now my grandpa says we don't talk about that, and I don't know why I'm doing it with a West uh, a Southern accent. <laughs> 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 Considering it's my dad's family and they didn't talk like this, you know, they, they talk more like this. Orale, pendejo, ¿qué es tu problema? Well, anyway, shall we continue on what we're doing? I was just going to say, we're so far off the rails, I don't actually know where they are. <laughs> uh, you uh, about Star Trek you Renegade. Word. Yeah. Word. No. I'll teach you all the word, pendejo. Okay. I, I, I think of oh. it as um, it, the, the closest English equivalent is. is dumb. No, I know what that is. No. Oh, no. you? Oh, somebody. Okay, good. Somebody knows what it is. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um. Anyway, back back on topic. EJ, would you have a Star Trek idea you want to spin, or are you just going to say sure. the word nobility over and over again? Nobility, nobility, nobility. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, because we could always give him a guitar and make him sing. Uh, oh God. <laughs> yeah, I saw the video. Oh, did you see that post? Uh, Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, I saw it. Mm. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Yeah, we, we goofed the off end, a lot. The, of the end's fun. just like, I love the end. It's just like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> you know who that is, right? Who said nope? No. Um, uh, it's on, I know I know who it is, but I can't think of the name. Yeah. <laughs> Emmy. Emmy. Right. Time for a brain fart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, she, she's an up-and-coming pop artist. Uh, I worked with her on uh, Starship Rising. Uh, great person. We get along mar- marvelously. She's always in the top 40 or 20 and all that kind of stuff. Anywho, uh, to answer Dave's question as far as where I would take Star Trek, I would do something kind of similar to what Gene Roddenberry did uh, when he had the chance to reboot it uh, in the late 80s with TNG and set it a a significant uh, amount of time in the future. So maybe 100 or even 200 years in the future. So that way you could pay – it's close enough in time where you could pay proper homage to what was going on in uh, the uh, DS9, uh, TNG, and Voyager timelines. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But uh, it's far enough. It's far enough in the future that you can actually do something completely new, uh, where you can almost uh, uh, reinvent the series uh, in a way, and that way uh, you kind of get the advantage that you would get with uh, Doctor Who. Every time they regenerate the character, every time the Doctor regenerates, it's almost a brand new series, and you can. And while they have uh, a respect for what's gone before, they have a lot of fun with this new, yeah. in effect, yeah. a new character. So you would have, I, I would put it on a brand new uh, Enterprise. And the reason I say Enterprise is just, just because it's become so iconic yeah. to uh, to the show and to the franchise. Um, it's their TARDIS. Then, uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, their tar- TARDIS, their DeLorean, you know, it's it's their flagship. Um, and it would be, uh, but I wouldn't make it the flagship of the fleet. I would make it something that they've carried as part of their cultural heritage for all these centuries. And it's kind of almost a, a shit job to be on. Yeah. Like why the hell would you want to be on the enterprise? It's probably outmoded. Doesn't get all the updates that all the other ships do. You know, they just kind of have this, this older ship uh, with the name so Enterprise legacy, flying yeah, around, it'd be interesting. It yes, it'd be interesting if it was something like, say, the Sovereign class Enterprise, Enterprise E, still in service, so ludicrously outdated compared to modern tech. But it's almost like the the Galactica in the reboot of Battlestar Galactica. It's there just as sort of as a symbol, more than an actual warship. I like that, but 
through some weird circumstance of of the situation that's going on, it all of a sudden becomes uh, crucial and pivotal to the story that's going on. And what ends up happening is this ship that nobody really wanted to be on to begin with, kind of like how Cisco didn't want to be on DS9 to begin with, becomes the catalyst for the Federation to enter an entire new era. Uh, EJ, I just had an idea that could make that work really well. Go for it. Um, the Enterprise E was one of the first capital ships to also, or the Sovereign class was one of the first major ship classes to use the bioneural gel packs. Mm -hmm. What if they went away from the bioneurals and whatever they were using in the future was comp was easily compromised by whatever they went up against, but they just couldn't deal with the bioneural gel? That was some sort of like in Ooh. Battlestar Galactica, where the older tech, for whatever stupid reason, was wibbly wobbly. <laughs> safe compared to the newer tech which was just mm, ruffle Hold. stomp yeah <laughs> I, I don't think it was wibbly wobbly safe i think they had a very sound uh, uh uh argument for that and basically when you're dealing with an enemy that can infiltrate any kind of computer oh yeah redundancies I, are know, the key yeah i'm, I'm not i'm not exactly. saying that the battlestar galactica stuff was wibbly wobbly i'm just saying in the new story you just use a wibbly wobbly explanation to explain why the bioneural is good and the the new super high tech advanced stuff isn't. That's what I mean. As as well, much oh, as much make it as nano probe Dr. computing. computing. So you open up a wall panel, you just see a replicator spider goes. It's like this one's working. Oh closes the That's panel, <laughs> walks away. <laughs> it just opens the door and it's like, eh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just hit the TF2 guy go, nope. <laughs> oh, and that could be a whole like like uh, theme throughout the entire new series, uh, kind of like that episode uh, in season five of Babylon Five, where you you followed the two janitors around yeah. for the entire yeah. episode. You know, wasn't that wasn't that, wasn't that wasn't essentially that a spoof on Red Dwarf? Yeah, was it? I I mean I I had when yeah. I watched Babylon Five, I had no concept of Red Dwarf because. It wasn't out here in the States, and I only became aware of Red Dwarf when I was writing Nobility, and our director, Neil Johnson, who uh, was born in England, raised in Australia, brought it to me and was like, you need to watch this if you're writing a comedy. <laughs> yeah. I, one of the things I think you should do, just for no other reason than because, sneak a TARDIS into every episode. Just, just You're on an alien planet, there's this, in the background, in the city is a random blue box. box. A random blue, box. random blue box. Just for a split second. I, so it's an episode set on the ship, on the desk, is a tiny little blue I box for no you reason. I get away with that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do it every episode. I would do it, like, once or twice a season. Yeah. And it could be like a game, like, like who, who's going to spot the TARDIS. Yeah, that, that, that's what I mean. It's... <laughs> spot the box. And try... I just saw something really spot funny. Do like it. a... Do like a Star Wars sort of thing, but have like the hilt of a just like the hilt of a lightsaber, but it doesn't turn on. So they just sort of look at it, and then they try and turn it on. And it's like zzz, zzz, and it's like garbage. And it just throws it behind them. <laughs> no, it's so it's old so and perfect. so weak. They start using it to shave. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, didn't you know? That's how everyone say it, shaved. <sighs> and then that, all of a sudden, that awkward moment it's in full, full core and like nearly like cuts their head off and like okay i'm gonna grow a beard now and now you have your Riker reference <laughs> i was gonna say that, that 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 awkward moment when you're shaving and you sneeze and now you oh. now you can clean your teeth through the side of your face <laughs> <laughs> you so that, that, reminds, that actually reminds me of the um, the whole shaving thing of how superman shaves he uses his laser. He uses his laser eyes to shave. In the mirror. Does do that? Does yeah, it really bounces off the. It bounces like off. Bounces back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It bounces off. It's like because it actually shows it in the animated TV show back in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> they act actually actually canon. They actually put it in. It's hilarious. Oh my god. Okay, can we get back on track? Yeah. Okay. Another idea I was thinking of for a possible Star Trek series. And this is references back to Enterprise and Voyager and a couple of the others. Um, now I know. There was the group. There was this. It was what was it the 29th century or something like that. They had that 
time um, agency part of the Federation. You oh, could veto, veto, veto immediately. Veto, veto immediately. You don't want Star Trek TARDIS. No, because it, it works for Doctor Who because of, of the nature of what it is and how, uh, as you said earlier, wibbly wobbly timey wimey it is. <laughs> but <laughs> for Star Trek, is which is supposed to be at least loosely based in actual science. By including time travel, now I, I should say reliable time travel, unlike what you saw in First Contact and any other series, uh, it, it's just way too complex and way too easy to go around and say, hey, by the way, okay, you know how we just fucked that up? We're going to go back and fix it. Yeah. It's it, it, just cool. because it makes everything too easy. It yeah. makes everything too easy, too that, complicated. Um, that just sounds, yeah, that time just travel like is just... A, that's actually a good point. I... I, I hereby yield my point to EJ. He wins. I retract my Star Trek TARDIS idea. Woohoo! So, I win. The, the idea of going back and um, fixing everything sounds like the last few episodes of Matt Smith's Doctor. Yeah. Kara jumping in the timeline. The idea of going back in time and fixing everything reminds me of the last episode of Voyager. Why she couldn't go back a few extra years to when they first ended up at the Delta Quadrant and go, oh, by the way, have all this awesome tech and we take I'm taking you back to... Um, I'm taking right. you back to Earth on in our right now. No problems, no questions asked, and yeah. I'm doing the entire series. I think that would have been hilarious. Once again, and you're Jane proving Ray. you're proving my point for me. Yeah, you? I know, I know. <laughs> but it would have made Voyager not happen, and if Voyager didn't happen, we wouldn't have Janeway. And then we'd all be happy then. Yeah, it'd just be a happier place. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what if they never assigned Janeway to Voyager in the first place? What if they'd have given it to Riker? <laughs> no. So anyway, Amy. I think you've somebody been... has an obsession with Riker. <laughs> no, I'm just covering that for Stuart. He, 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 he just wants to play with the beard. It's like Riker's beard. If you rub it once, you become immortal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, Jonathan, where are you? Jonathan Frakes, come here, please. <laughs> <laughs> We'll leave that alone. EJ, that'll be one hell of a podcast. <laughs> I don't, I don't, man, I don't, think I, could, I don't think my beard could ever get that good. I don't think my beard ever get close to Rikers. <laughs> well, when I when I did the the Mythbusters came to Australia and did a live show in Brisbane, and I bought the, the meet and greet tickets. And afterwards, they shepherded us all as meet and greets off out the back, so we could sort of have a twenty minute half hour chat with them. And one of the guys goes to to Jamie with the with his walrus beard goes. People have said if we uh, rumor is that if you stroke your beard, um, you get good luck for the next five years. And he just looks at him and goes, "Try it." <laughs> and everyone's just like, "Ooh!" <laughs> I wouldn't have tried like, it. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will just I will just been like poke it with my finger. <laughs> uh, no, I, I would have been like okay and like like rubbed my hand against his face. Yeah, that, that, that would have crossed the creepy line, and he probably would have stabbed you. You didn't see the yeah. the look on his face was if you come near me, they will never be able to find the body because I know how to hide it. That has been my job for the past twelve years. You really hide want or to test me? Ah, <laughs> uh, both. Yeah, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Either way, it won't be found. Okay. Okay. And, <laughs> back on topic. It's about time we turn this over to Amy and see which ideas she would like to greenlight as the next Star Trek series. Okay, CBS, who's won the deal? <laughs> um, it says, I say I like um, EJ's better. Yep. But then again, he's all combined pretty much at the end of it. To, it'd make it a good show with all the information combined. Yeah. And it sounds really odd. Yeah. So bits and pieces of everybody's idea. So what you're saying is, everybody wins! Yeah, I know, it doesn't quite work. So, but, I, I, I'm enacting the airlock rule. Amy's out the airlock. Um, I'm taking over, <laughs> and therefore my idea wins because I'm I'm in charge, so I win by default. No, it doesn't work that way. Veto, veto. <laughs> veto. I, 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 like, I like Amy Amy's decision better. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's because uh, hang on, um, I, I force veto it. <laughs> Okay, you know what? You know what? I'm a tricky. Your whole force thing doesn't work on me. Uh, you know what? This isn't the writer you're looking for. Sorry. I launched him out the airlock. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Oh, wait, well, I'll just use the quartz. So... Ha! Bubble. But you think about... Okay, you think about it. In the end, you're all joining all the information of, and ideas together with EJ's. Yeah. Yeah. So technically, EJ's wins for the fact that you all put information in that makes sense. Okay. Sort of. So basically, and what she's saying is you made a mistake in having me go almost last. Yeah, pretty much. Yes. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, let's let's leave the guy who does TV tell stories for a living and let him go last and steal all our ideas and make them exponentially better. <laughs> and now you know how Hollywood works. <laughs> Yeah. And, now, and, now, and now you know why Michael Bay has been doing Transformers for so long. Okay, next part. Because uh, all he's good at is explosions. <laughs> We're halfway through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we, we know. Yeah. I'm, I'm watching the time. It's fine. We got plenty of time. We we'll just, we'll just toss Stuart out the airlock and lose his segment and problem solved. Um, okay. Exactly. EJ, do you want to do a? <coughs> Sorry. Well, do you want to do a nobility recap? From Nobility at WonderCon, I think it was you said you went to. We did. We had a, a booth and a panel at WonderCon. And you know what? Uh, from my perspective, um, you know, we were really worried because because of the holiday uh, and because of the fact that uh, all, um, all our celebs are, are, are celebrities, uh, we didn't have very many of them with us. And a lot of them were out working. As I said, they're celebrities. Uh, and then uh, the few who, who weren't out there working were you know celebrating the holiday with their families uh, because they were about to be working and they wanted to spend time with their families. Yeah. And so we were pretty concerned as, you know, well, hey, you know, uh, are people even going to show up to our panel? We had this huge room that sits a thousand people and all this kind of stuff. And so basically we had a ton of volunteers handing out flyers the entire weekend, drumming up uh, support. And we kicked the panel out of the park. Nice. We knocked the panel out of the park. We had almost 700 people there. It was incredible. And how many uh, of those? Panel and how many of those 700 people did you pay to fill the seats? Uh, that is uh, <laughs> classified information. Um, <laughs> you're not supposed to ask that. Uh, so so the, the the answer is about half of them. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Two thirds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's even worse. I was, being, I was being, I was being generous. I was trying to be nice. No, no, no. We didn't see anybody. We had uh, seven hundred people uh, there, and it was absolutely incredible. Um, we debuted our uh, trailer for anyone, anyone who wants to take a look at it. youtubecom slash series. You'll go. You'll be able to find it there. Nice. Uh, or on our website, nobilitytheseries.com. Okay. Uh, plug done. You know. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Um, but no, no, it was absolutely an incredible experience. It was our largest panel yet. Um, and, uh, it, it really kind of showed that folks were coming, not just for the celebrities that we have on board, but for the show, because people really do want to see something different. Yeah. And then after the panel, uh, which for me, uh, the panel was technically yesterday, uh, because it's 2.35 AM, but since I haven't gone to bed yet today, um, <laughs> Well, if it makes you feel yeah. any better, it's currently 7.35 p.m. Queensland time. Yeah, that doesn't make me feel better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, and, like, people were following us back to the booth, and um, uh, and we, ha we, we, we hadn't planned a signing. What we had planned to do is to hand out all of our posters at the panel, which we pretty much did, and then, uh, you know, people would go their own ways. No, tons of people followed us back to our booth, uh, and and kept asking us to sign, so we had an impromptu signing there, and it was just uh, a, an incredible experience. Nice. Um, and uh, to top it all off, we had a uh, to to kind of uh, during the entire con, we had uh, we partnered with these folks called uh, Ultra D, who have developed this amazing um, uh, glasses-free 3D TV. Nice. And we had that at the con the entire time, and. Uh, they're coming out. I'm told they're coming out uh, later this year, perhaps early next year. Uh, they are um, being a little uh, hesitant as to the time because they want to make sure they get everything right and, uh, before they in, in, go into mass production. But they are coming out soon, and it's definitely something you can you can uh, keep an eye out um, for. Keep an eye out for yeah. Ultra D folks. 
And um, so to top it all off, there was that. And then on top of that, um, have I got, have I ever told you guys my Richard Hatch story? Uh, not that I remember, but I forget everything, so. <laughs> Speaking well, of which, ever... why am I wearing headphones? What's this microphone for? Where am I? What is this house? <laughs> <laughs> now I know you're a bit. Uh, <laughs> but, you need um, to go you know, fish. I've never heard of who Richard Hatch is, right? Uh... Wow, okay. Wow, uh, my, my brain just died. Right? Yes. Okay, Apollo. Ah, yes. See, we're the sort of, I'm the sort of person that you say a name, like an actor's name, and you say, like, Richard Dean Anderson, and I'll stare at you blank, and you go, MacGyver, and it's like, ha, oh, ha. Huh. Oh, yes. All right, so, Apollo in the original series, uh, Tom, uh, Tom... Zarek. Zarek, thank you, in the new series. Same actor, um that's, and he, it's pretty um, awesome that by the way <laughs> yeah right uh, um so in t 2011 i was coming back from college and um uh and i went to my first star trek convention because you know mommy and daddy wouldn't let me go as a kid and know the feeling my first one was when i moved out of my parents place <laughs> oh there we go so. uh, <laughs> And I met Richard Hatch there, and I and I uh, was uh, asking him advice about making that transition from child acting to adult acting. Yeah. He said, "Go shoot your own stuff." Yeah. Don't wait for the studios. Just go shoot your own stuff. And that kind of set me on the path to doing what I'm doing now with Nobility. Nice. And nice. so I met Richard Hatch there, and I and uh, 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 the Winter Twins, whoever knows them, they go to conventions all the time. Uh, they're these, uh, uh, they started writing books when they're like in their preteens or something. And, uh, uh, they're 20 years old now and they have all these books out and it's incredible. Anyway, they know, they know Richard Hatch and I think they told him the story that I just told you guys. And Richard Hatch comes over to our booth and is like, he, he's jokingly pretending like we're competitors. And he's like, who told you you could do this? What are you talking about? You know, who told you you could do this? And I just turn, turn to him and go. You did. <laughs> <laughs> he got a kick out of that. And, um, you know, and, and we kept seeing each other during the convention. And later on, um, you know, we'll probably be having uh, lunch and, and getting to know each other. But it's just, um, you know, it was just a really, for me personally, it was a very, very fun con. And for Nobility, it was a huge success. And uh, WonderCon is one of my favorite cons. Whoever is ever going to be in the States, uh during this time of year next year, uh, please go to WonderCon. Though they're changing the venue, and I'm hoping that doesn't affect the character of the con too much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, we yeah, well, recently we had our out, biggest yeah. con up over here, uh, Supernova in Brisbane, changed venues, and it was nothing but better. <laughs> so, oh, it was so much better. So it much better. Because the old place had no aircon, and it was the middle of summer. And no aircon, middle of summer, Ooh. so... 30 degrees Celsius, which is like a million degrees Fahrenheit. I have no idea. I think it's about <laughs> it's a, 90 odd. It's, it's a lot. Um, it's, it's pretty damn hot. It was 30 degrees when it was cold, and then you crammed people like sardines to the point where they could barely walk, let alone move, um, into a building. And that's if they could find where they're going. And yeah, that's if they could find where they're going. And that's where, the, that's where the stalls were. And then they had a separate building for where they did the signings, which wasn't much better. And uh, the last year they had it there, they actually had them doing the signings out. I was one of the, one of the stables or something, because it was the only yeah. area big enough to support them. No air con, sheet metal roof. It was just catastrophically bad. Um, this is almost the worst thing you could possibly imagine. And I'm sorry, Doc. I know you're listening. I know you helped set that up, but you got to admit it was bad. Um, then they moved to the convention center. Now, the there was a couple of drawbacks to the convention center. It's it's a bit more of a yeah, it's overall it's better. Put it that way. Um, it's bigger. It's got actually it's, got aircon. Um, yeah, it was bigger. They got the whole. They got um. They hired out all the major um halls. So they had uh one. Uh, they had halls two, three, three, and four for um ex um the exhibitors and everything. And then hall one was one of the um panel um halls. Yeah. So. Yeah. It well, was, what I. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just saying, and it was just it was because it was there was so much more space, almost what twice as much space as yeah, the RNA huge. showground. Just so much more walking room. Yes, yeah, so so much better. The um the con while it changed, it changed for the better, and hopefully when you have your change, it sort of follows a similar rule. 
Yeah, th- my concern isn't so much about the venue itself, though. The fact that uh, it's in Anaheim, uh, where Disneyland is, uh, about oh. 20 minutes from my home, is kind of nice because it's really close. But the main thing that really bothers me is that they're moving it to the same location as Kamikaze, uh, Stanley's oh. Kamikaze, so you don't oh. know. And yeah. the Los Angeles yeah. Convention is a great location. The problem is, is that what makes WonderCon for me, ever since we started doing Nobility, my favorite convention is the fact that it's in Anaheim and the people who come there uh, aren't jaded. They aren't, um, uh, they're not jaded. They're not uh, uh, cynical or anything like that. They're open to you and they're so friendly and fun. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the first convention we did, uh, did was WonderCon as nobility and it was, um, uh, uh, it was myself, Emmy, who I spoke about earlier. Um, and, uh, though I think that was before we were recording, uh, Emmy, the, the pop star and, um, and our director, Neil Johnson sitting in someone else's booth signing posters about this project that nobody ever had heard about and we had and we had to keep signing because uh people kept coming up to us and were fascinated about what we were doing it's just such a friendly atmosphere and such a, a great uh, crowd that comes to to wondercon but now they're moving it to los angeles where where if kamikaze is in any indication the crowd is extremely jaded very hard to impress everybody hates hates it everybody like all the vendors the vendors can't sell stuff the the talent that comes there can't sell autographs because nobody cares anymore because they live in la and they see these people you know uh all passing the- on the street sometimes yeah. um and if they move wonder con to la this con that i love will become very similar to this con that i wouldn't say hate but um i find uh much less satisfying than other conventions yeah yeah so yeah, so. it's a totally, totally different scenario. That's like moving, yeah. Wow, that that absolutely sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've heard exactly. Some, I've, I've, heard some, I've heard some bad things about Kamikaze, so yeah. Um, even over here, we get we get sort of whispers of what the cons are like over there. Yeah. So, well, if you want a new con to call home, check out Hawaii Con. It is a holiday <laughs> and a convention at the same time. That See? was such a bad segue. <laughs> it was. It really was. I, I, I said to I said to GV that I'd plug it every now and again. So there you go. Oh. I plugged it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, bad plug, but you plugged it. Oh yeah, but I never. I, I never said I was good at it. <laughs> Tw- well, we already have ability actors heading that way. Go ahead and tell G, uh, GB. I said hi. <laughs> oh, I, I, I love to go. Yeah. Yeah, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> I, I I don't have the money to fly out myself, but uh, you know, if you wanted me there, <laughs> it, it's 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 okay, Scott. Scott, are you listening? Scott, it's okay. We love you too. Damn it, Scott! Damn it, Scott! Stop it! Bad Scott. <laughs> so, Scott is one of Stuart's friends, and he just posted in the chat. You guys suck. <laughs> so, I had to, I had to retaliate. <laughs> I, I, I am a heterosexual male. I do not <laughs> suck. I lick. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I'm not going to respond to that one. Um, okay, I'm not... <laughs> Moving away from this, back towards um, nobility and, the, and WonderCon and stuff. Um, have you... By any chance, reached out to Supernova over here, just out of curiosity. No, we haven't. Um, you sent me some information on them, didn't you? Um, yes, Supernova is probably. We've got two big cons over here. We've got Oz Comic Con and we've got Supernova. Supernova is probably the better of the two, but they're both good in their own sort of way of doing things. Yeah, um, Oz Comic Con has just started up in Brisbane, so he, they're yeah, still building their feet. Year. Um, but Brisbane come in other states for um, a few years now, so yeah, yeah. yeah. They might, that might be, but they are still limited to what they have. Yeah. Um. And anyway, um, I've forgotten his name again. Walter. 
Che I'm just gonna, uh, I'm, Enid, I'm, played Chekhov I'm, I'm on just, the original series. I was just gonna say, I'm gonna go with Ch original Chekhov. Um, so yeah, original Chekhov, um, <laughs> George Takai <laughs> and Uhura are coming over for in a couple of weeks. So Ooh, I have a technical story too. <laughs> so you could. Um, I was just gonna suggest reaching out to Supernova and saying, um, just sort of reaching out to them and saying, look. This dude helped us in our Project Nobility. Would you mind playing the Nobility trailer before his panel or something like that? And they'll probably go, yes, lots of the monies. And you'll be like, haha, the Australian dollar is like 10 cents American. It's like 70, but you know what I mean. Compared to what it was. Really? It's that low. When I, yeah. when, when I was in Australia, it was like 89 cents on the dollar. Yeah, yeah. no, it's dropped bad. Try yeah. to buy anything else is horrendous now. Our current government well, is Well, that's just because so we're that awesome. That's yeah. all I can say. Well, see, the problem is we hired George W. Bush to run our country. And the first thing he did <laughs> was fly the economic plane into an economic tower. And then it's confused oh! why there's oh! crap all over the ground. Wow. The Let's fired. not go there. That's not just shots that's... fired. That's wow. suicidal. Yeah. That let's leave it. <laughs> yeah, not helping Amy. Yeah, the, 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 the Amy has spoken. We're moving on. Anyway, um, so. <laughs> yeah. Look, yeah, look, look, look. Anyway, but yeah, like, like I said, just um, it wouldn't hurt. I'll send you a link to Supernova. And you can sort of reach out and see what they say. You never know until you ask. Um, Please. So yeah. Yeah. The only thing is, is, unless they're willing to fly me out there, I got no way to get out there. So. <laughs> uh, uh, no. Yeah, they, 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 they don't do that. So, but you, uh, they, they, they might do Sadly, they... the guy who's. I hate having to admit this, but the guy who's in charge of Supernova makes Scrooge look like a very, very, very generous man. Yeah. That's being generous. Anyway, uh, I Jesus think it's. Oh, <laughs> British man, generous? Yeah. That's the point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, I think it's about time we gave Stuart his chance at doing his segment. And I know that Scott is going to love I it. I we airlock him and keep talking about nobility. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got to let him have his news. Okay, so that, well, he's actually got a... We'll let you... You've got seven minutes to do your arrow flash thing, and then you've got your news afterwards, so... Yeah, you've got 12, right. 12 minutes total, but... Hit it hard. Enough. All right, so um, uh, uh, CW have been working on uh, doing a Flash and Arrow spin-off uh, TV series with characters from Flash and Arrow as well as a couple of new characters that have been announced recently. The characters that we know so far <coughs> is Atom. Yep, who's effective. That If they keep playing Atom the way he's played at the moment, he's Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's DC's Iron Man, basically. Yeah, giant, giant, giant super suit. Yeah, R rich billionaire guy that hits on lots of chicks. He, well, he doesn't get drunk, so I guess that's not a parallel. He flies around in a suit of armor. And that... he's like and, and, Yeah. And, and 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 gets and gets disabled really easily. Yeah, which is sort of hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Uh, yeah. All, all I can say uh, is, there... Dee Dee, where's my super suit? <laughs> 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 Uh, there is a rumor. Um, uh, this is not confirmed, but because um, uh, I'm gonna get her name wrong, Katie Holtz. Oh uh, no, Katie Lotz, uh, uh, who plays uh, Sarah in yep. Arrow. Uh, there is a rumor that she will uh, replay her role as as that Black Canary. That'd be interesting. We don't know how they're gonna pull that off. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the rumor at the moment. We don't know anything more about that. No. We have uh, two additional characters that were um, announced over the weekend. Yep. Which is Hawkwoman. Hawk, Hawk girl. Hawk no, no. Woman. They refer to her as Hawkwoman. Uh, ah. Yeah, <laughs> and Rip Hunter. Um, who's that? I yeah. I'll need to explain this. Rip Hunter is Booster Gold's son. Okay. He's a. Okay. Yes, someone was stupid enough to actually mate with Booster Gold. <laughs> Wasn't it Why? Hawk Girl? No, uh, no, Hawk Girl's Hawk, Hawk Girl's with Hawk Man. With Hawk Man. Yeah, they're an actual couple. Can I just they're put it actual... this way, Stuart, as to how that statistical impossibility happened? <laughs> no, I know how it happened. Money, <laughs> lots. Well, of it. 
he would have thrown more money problem. at this girl than Bruce Wayne has disposable income. <laughs> well, yeah, basically, the idea of what I think they're going to go with this is I believe they're doing a uh, JLI. Justice League the International. National. Yes. Yeah. So, so there are two. There are two um, Justice Leagues. There's Justice League of America, which is Batman, Superman, Batman Superman, Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman Master Green Lantern, Cyborg, Shazam. Yeah. All those. Then there's the um, Justice League International, which is sort of the B grade here. Oh. Yeah. I'm 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 seriously holding back on my DC is going to kill the superhero bubble rant right now. So you can more than happily go back and watch previous episodes and hear me say that rant. So I'm leaving it there. <laughs> uh, there's also some news that actually came out of WonderCon about it, actually. Um, Stephen Amell actually said that um, his character as Arrow may be in the first episode, and that there's going to be a, um, a character from Arrow who's not a main character who's going to be in all three shows. So Flash, Arrow, and the spin-off. So, not a main character, but in all three shows. That makes me think that it's either it's gonna be Felicity or or someone else. Yeah, I was gonna. Uh, what I was gonna say was um, one of the Suicide Squad guys from Arrow. Well, that the uh, Suicide Squad's sort of been shelved for now. Yeah. Because of the movie that's coming out, because they're actually about to start filming that. Now, can anybody explain to me why they're not integrating the DC movie universe with the DC TV universe? Because they're stupid. Yeah. yeah, that's effectively been my rant every time we bring up Marvel and DC. DC's it's, it's, got a semi-decent universe building with Arrow and Flash. Admittedly, I don't like Flash, but that's because Flash is stupid as a superhero, not the point. Um, and they've, they've done a yeah, decent and, job. So he of, runs really fast. Yeah, it's, it's a good superpower. Let's, let's see, how do we stop he, him? He, he can vibrate through walls. Yeah. But Let, not through a break. And what else can he vibrate? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, back back on back, a little bit back on topic. Like, I would love to see them bring Arrow, Flash, Gotham, and the movie universe in together into one fleshed out universe. And it's not impossible. It takes a bit of retconning, but it would. It's not impossible. Yeah. Um, Gotham. Given how often they reboot the damn movie universes. Yeah. You'll see Gotham could easily be a backstory for Batman in Batman vs. Superman. And True. Arrow and Flash could easily have characters that migrate from the Arrow and Flash to the cinema universe. But it's almost like getting Spider-Man into Avengers. It's not impossible, but it just means that they've got to wrangle so much stuff legally to pull it off as to who gets rights to what and to what character and to how much money they put where to support what. And it that's where it's going to become hard. And now, a friend of mine... Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, I was, I was, I, my, my rant continues from there. I'm just going to cut myself off because we don't have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> we well, I, we I did have... an entire podcast on his rant. We did an entire podcast on my rant. It's like that's episode just... 10 or We've done 15. that multiple times, actually. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Enough about my rant. EJ, go. Uh, uh, okay, uh, well, I have a friend, not, not anybody who... who uh, is a major player in the, in the industry or anything like that. This isn't like insider news or anything. But I had a friend of mine who is a huge fan of the CW and Supernatural and Arrow and Flash. And he was telling, and he's a massive Spider-Man fan, and he was telling me that he heard rumors that they actually were integrating Spider-Man into Avengers. They are. They and that are. Sony yeah, they are. and gonna, Disney had reached some sort of deal. That, that's actually been officially Sorry. confirmed. Um, okay, well, well, as of yeah. last we heard, it was going to be Captain America Civil War. Um, it's where we're first going to see him. Unless where they we're first going to see him. Unless they put something in Ant-Man. Yeah. Unless there's a reference to Ant-Man. If they actually Ant -Man kill or... all Captain America and keep him dead, I'm going to, like, riot in the streets. It'll be a one-man <laughs> riot. I'll bring all of my guns and, yeah. Ooh, can, can we paint you green first and then film it? <laughs> oh. Yes! Let's wait, do it! Wait, wait. <laughs> you have guns? <laughs> what guns? My guns. I, I have uh, nine guns. Uh, okay, we'll most talk of... about oh, that after the podcast. Yes, yes, yes. We, we've got less than, yes, five, less than five minutes to do the news. Stuart, go. <laughs> oh. Um, so, uh, obviously, um, over, over the last week, it was New Year's, and there was a lot of funny New Year's news. 
New what? So now that now that Stuart's been airlocked. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, back out the airlock. He's lost what little plot he had left. <laughs> New Year's. <laughs> New Year's. Did you, did you... <laughs> it's April. <sighs> Come on, I can't. I can't have a little. I can't have my own muck up. It's 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 called regeneration weekend. Get it right. <laughs> it's called eat lots of chocolate and your brain goes fried. <laughs> yeah. And okay, anyway. So. Over yeah. April Fools, we yeah. had April Fools news. You have, you have Deadpool four is minutes officially left. Deadpool is officially confirmed as R18, and the way that they did it was absolutely hilarious. That video is great. Next, go. Uh, next, um, uh, there really wasn't much news out to be honest. Next, go. <laughs> Nobility He's out of news. Red vs. Blue, Red vs. Blue is back. Yes, I am watching that as of tomorrow. I am so annoyed that I missed that coming back. I saw episode two posted today, and I was just like, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a sponsor. I'm a sponsor, so yeah, so, so am I. But I just I, for some reason I somehow managed to miss it. I don't know. It was just like yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, what news? Uh, can we talk about can we talk about Michael going to NASA or not? Um, are, we to, are we allowed to plug that or not? Mm. Yeah, well, just, just, just for those who want to know, Michael, the creator of a page, has um, been selected as one of 50 different Facebook page groups to go to NASA and watch the launch of their new Super King Kamehameha rocket thing that's name escapes me. Um, Stuart. He refuses I got to action. take me. Yeah, uh, well, I said to him that I would sell my kidney to get a plane ticket and fly over there and join him, but... <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, but nobody cares about your kidney. Yeah, neither do I. That's why I want to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, why did I forget this news? Oh, I'm a stupid idiot. You've run out of time. Bad luck. No more news for you. No, Star Wars The Force Awakens panel is going, is going to be broadcasted. Yes, that's pretty awesome. Oh, nice. Space him. That... Uh... <laughs> yeah. It's, it's too late in the show to space him. No, it's not. Damn it. I do it. I, yeah. I so want to show up to Celebration in my Wrath of Khan uniform. <laughs> do it, please. Please do it. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Let's see. Oh, well, that would mean I need what? to get tickets what? to Celebration, and also I would need to find my Wrath of Khan uniform, wherever the damn thing is. <laughs> For, the, for those who are confused as to what's going on, I just disconnected Scarecrow just because I could. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and this yes. is why I wear a normal suit when I'm on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with Force with Force Awakens, I believe what I've heard, what I've heard and has been confirmed that is going to be at the panel is full full fledged trailer. Nice. Uh, um, uh, Lando Calrissian is actually going to be there. Like he's going to be, um, I believe he's emceeing the panel. Nice. Has he done anything since Star Wars? Who knows? <laughs> uh, who's in Star Wars Rebels? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. Like I um, said. Oh yeah. For those who haven't heard, oh yeah, EJ, you'll love this. We are getting Avengers on the twenty third of April in Australia. They are it's also airing the new Star Wars <laughs> movie trailer. Is meant to be airing at the same time. Us podcast hosts, me, Scarecrow, Amy, and Stuart, are going to go and watch it in Indra Pili, and we're going to do a day after cast, a special bonus podcast on the 24th or the 25th, whenever I can scrounge them together, specifically for Avengers. So mm, That'll be huge. And don't worry, EJ, I'll tell you all about it. Can I mail you my 5D and you can just record it for me? <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> uh, not if we want to get thrown out. See over here we've Your got point? the point. <laughs> See you won't get it. We... I'll get part of it. Uh, there. Probably probably the previews and that's about it. Yeah. Well, cause <laughs> I, I don't know how they do cinemas over there, but over here we got the the dude walks through the cinema with the torch and shines it in your face for like the first ten minutes of the movie, and the rest of them it's fine. Okay. Anyway, we're in the last couple of minutes, so it's time to say One goodbye. Um, Scarecrow, now's your chance to say your last final words. Good night, guys. Have a good one. Uh, I just want to say, go check out the 105th Armory page. They've got all sorts of cool Mech Warrior stuff. Well, not Mech Warrior. What's it called? Gundam? Uh, we've got, no, we don't have That's Gundam. We have the yes. largest collection of Macross, That's it. Zoids, and Patlabor kits in Australia. Yes, it's brilliant. Check it out. Stuart, your chance to say goodbye. Go. Goodbye, everyone, and we will see you next week. Okay, Amy, go. Bye, everyone. Stay safe until next week. 
And as always, EJ gets the last say. You've got 10 seconds. Of course, I'm that awesome. For all the Star Wars fans out there, Trek rules, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he wins. He just, he just wins. <laughs> He just he just wins. He just he just wins. He just he just wins. He just he just